Let me just see <laughs> what I'm doing. Start the video. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Jean. Hello, Jean. It's good to meet you. And a fellow hey, South you African. Too. Yes, I'm from Cape Town. Oh, yay. Two South Africans. Yes. Uh, yay. Yeah. That's awesome. And you? I'm Where in Uniondale. Oh, wow. I'm a word. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. that's in the middle of nowhere <laughs> it, it is it is and particularly for a girl who was born in Josie so yes absolutely I'm enjoying it cool here. so nice. are you sick sorry yeah no no are you on a farm or no weirdly enough we're right in the middle of the village uh, but the village okay. is, is so small <laughs> Then it's still Imagine. much much quieter than Johannesburg where I grew up. So <laughs> no, definitely. Mm. Our, our biggest challenge is that we live right next door to the police station. And um, oh my word. on weekends we, we get what we call slammers. So they, they lock yes. people up who are drunk and disorderly, who then there's something in their cell that they they slam violently to try and get attention. Oh really? So it, it can be a little okay, disruptive. Yeah, Yes, yes, uh, but it's it's oh my quite, gosh. Quite fun sometimes. So anyway, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're just going to hang around to see if anybody else, else joins us, okay. um, and make small talk oh. in the meantime. And if nobody else joins us, then we'll just have a, a conversation together ourselves. Um, yes. Just to reality check, do you mind if I post this video publicly afterwards so that the members who've not shown up can see what they've missed. Yes. No, that's fine. You're cool with that. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm cool. Okay. So I can contribute. <laughs> no, that's all good. I'm here so, to learn. And okay, listen. awesome. Awesome. So maybe <laughs> you can tell us who you are, what your relationship with Lino Prince is and why you want to learn more about them. Um basically I I just want to do liner printing for fun. I love sewing and I love fabric and I love okay. pattern okay. and um, I just cannot always find what I'm looking for. Yes. So, so the idea is that I want to start printing my own fabric, but just for myself. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. So, um, so I've been playing around and obviously I've got lots to learn. So I just do it in my spare time. Okay. And yeah. Okay. And I've been looking at like Indian prints and block printing. I've done screen printing, okay. but that is quite a process. And, you know, um, I'm just looking for something that's a little bit more easier to manage. Yes, yes. So, so I personally have done both. And I always, always go back to the line of printing because it's such a direct method. You know, yes, with, this, yes. with the screen printing, you've got to prepare the screen and you've got to clean it properly. Exactly. Otherwise, the mesh gets clogged up and stuff like that. Whereas with Lino, I can just grab it and carve it and start printing straight away. Exactly. That's why it's appealing to me. I, I, I like the effect of screen printing. But I like the clean cut lines. and the <laughs> But in the end, I think it's just more manageable. And my daughter can also sit with me and do it. And it's mm. just yeah, mm. easier. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I, I'm quite addicted to the carving process. I find it very, very therapeutic. Um, so I think, I think between the therapeutic value of the carving and just that, that yes. instant direct result that I can get, I, I'm very loath to. And also they store smaller than screen prints. Screens, you need quite a big storage yes. area if you build them up. Exactly. Are you um, right? over time and and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. all sorts of things happen to screens you know they get holes in they get clogged up they mm, exactly they're clunky so i've i've got my entire career's worth of designs are all packed in one very small box uh in a storage unit in howick at the Amazing. moment um so i can't <laughs> get at them um but uh, we could always make new ones. <laughs> well, that's what I'm doing right now, and it's it's quite interesting. When we moved down, 
we were like, okay, we're in a transition phase. We're not sure when we're going to be able to get our stuff out of storage or how long the timeline is going to be. So I packed a bunch of small crafts that I could do when I got here to keep me going. And yeah, I, had, wow. I had the lino and the carving tools in a box because I could pack a small stack of blocks and carving tools into a very tiny space because we came down just in a bucky. And I've been looking at them and looking at them for 10 months. And eventually this month, I took them out. I was like, you love carving lino so much. Why are you not doing it at the moment? Yes. So I took it out this month. I carved my first block and I realized why I was putting it off. Because now I can't test it. I don't have my ink. Oh, oh you don't have your ink. I don't have fabric to print on. Oh. I don't have my rollers. We're in lockdown. I don't have spare cash to buy all stuff when I've got a whole bunch sitting yes. in storage already. Um, so, oh my word. So now I'm, I'm, sitting, there, I'm sitting there like a three year old going, I wish I could print the damn thing. <laughs> and I can't get Ooh, to it. That's quite, yo, what can you do? Maybe, yo. Well, I did a, a rubbing. I put a piece of paper over and I did a rubbing with a pencil because it's a, a, oh, I see. Yes, yes. It's a repeat block. So just to I, get the pattern. Yes, just to see kind of what it's going to look like, uh, which is quite a fun process. So do you do mostly patterns? I love I love tiled, tiled prints and I love tiles yes. that you can turn in different directions to get different effects. Yes. So if the, I sometimes make tiles that have two matched ends, then you just, you just tile them. Continue with the pattern. Yes, but if one end is different from the other, then you've got options to do oh, them okay. the same way or to turn them or to, to stagger them. Um, and and mm. what I tend to do is when I want to make a tile, I split it up in thirds and I put features okay. on the, th I do changes in the pattern on those one third lines, which then means when I turn them and stuff like that, you get interesting things happening at those meetup points. Yes they will meet up yes. on those yes ah that's an awesome idea yes yes so you might want to play with that have you got square liner or rectangular liner oh i've got um it's rectangular so i just cut it into the shape if i want it into a shape okay at the moment i'm just making small little like a circle and a like just shapes and yes. then i just print different and make patterns with different shapes yes so I make it like it's very basic i decided i'm not going to try complicated stuff very okay. basic shapes okay almost okay. like you know there's like there's that one mid-century where it's like it's a circle and then it's two halves and then yes. they just play around with that pattern yes yes, yes. absolutely but it's not really a pattern but it's yeah no, it's, it's, it's a great way of playing. And in fact, uh, when, when I teach workshops, I'll often just create cutouts in, in geometric shapes that you then play with. So yes. it's, it's a great yes. way. And, and particularly for things like bed linen and curtaining and stuff like that, plain squares exactly. and frames and things like that work really well. Yes. That's exactly what I'm, that's, ex I'm just working, I'm just making cushions. Okay. <laughs> so it's okay. paint shapes. And then eventually I would like to evolve into something more complex, but for now, it's also just getting the hang of the cutting and mm. Mm. I'm not that neat yet. <laughs> Practice. Yes. And also I have to say on that note, particularly if anybody's watching and is worried about non-perfection, um, mm. the eye is very forgiving and fabric is very oh, yeah. forgiving. You must remember that very often fabric, especially if you're using it for garments, will be shaped and it, it'll be stitched and it'll drape and the body still goes in it and mm. it moves. So there can yes. be quite a lot of imperfections in it that you can get away with if you're printing a, a layer of cloth. And um, yes. my only piece of advice I'll give is that um, the eye is more forgiving of a print that is misplaced and skew than one that is blurred. So very, oh, yeah. very often a beginner will place something badly and then the instinct is to go and correct it. 
don't okay leave it where it is even if there's a space like a big space like yes. this going just leave it print as is because your eye will be more forgiving of that that misplacement on the cloth yes. than it will of a blurred print sitting in the middle of a bunch of crisp ones yes does that make sense it definitely does okay okay because that's something and I then I, do. Hmm. and then of course i didn't have a, a, a the roller thingy i don't know what that is called the braille yeah. or the yes so i thought i'm gonna first try and paint it on okay and that didn't look that didn't work so well and then i thought i would try a sponge okay and that also didn't work well so obviously the the roller is the way to do it what or the only you, way what ink are you using um it's fabric paint okay what brand oh my gosh is it equity can't remember Yes, that sounds, it sounds like that, yes. Okay, Aquatex works I think that's really, the one. really well with one of those cheap sponge rollers that you get from the hardware store. Oh, yes. Yes. I think so, I, I might have one. Of so the rubber brayer <laughs> works very well for your oil-based inks. But okay. if you're working with a water-based acrylic, you can mm. you can use the sponge roller and and if it's Aquatex, you can add water at will. I know some of the brands of acrylic fabric paints say you must buy an extender and add the extender if you want to water it down. Yes. But Aquatex can take a whole lot of water. I always use a spray bottle, and I just spray it to oh. make it to make it a little bit runnier. The consistency that you yes yes yeah. Don't, what do you use? Aquatex. Mm -hmm. I've worked with Aquatex since 1993. I was I was very lucky. My um, I dated a guy at the time who took me directly to Chemistol and said, "This is what you need to buy if you want to do screen printing." And I started working okay. with their product, and I've never worked with anything else. I at one stage did try the Dollar fabric paint, um, mm -hmm. but I found that it was sticky. Your Aquatex is creamier. Okay. Yes. So it wasn't as comfortable to work with. And that might just be uh -huh. because I was very used to working with Aquatex. But I have also yes. noticed on some things that I made, it's not as wash fast as... Uh, okay. Yes. So I've got some handkerchiefs okay, cool. that I printed with the Dollar fabric paint. And, and over time with washing, they've faded much more than an Aquatex would. Mm. So do you know where to get the Aquatex? Um, well, there is a space in Belleville that I sometimes go to, to buy, okay. that I so, use for the screen printing. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, if, yeah. if you go online to chemosol.co.za, that's C-H-E-M-O-S-O-L, you can order from okay. them and I think they'll, they'll courier to you. Okay, fantastic. And they've, they've got metallics, they've got uh, UV colors. They've got pearlescent colors um, that are delicious. The pearls oh. are beautiful. And the, the metallics, I absolutely love their metallic colors. I thought that sounds fantastic. Okay, I'll definitely look that up. Yes, if you've got any of the mag, <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got that magpie thing in you, then the metallics will excite you. <laughs> yes. I love to... <laughs> Uh, we, I used to make fashion uh, fabrics for the South African fashion industry and one of my favorite party tricks was to get a black fabric and then take a black ink and put just a tiny, tiny drop of silver oh, paint yes. into it. Yes, that would be fantastic. So printing black on black with a silver shimmer in then it's almost like a damask yes. that in some light you can't yes, see it yes. all, but you tilt it and then suddenly the print jumps out at you. Mm. I love that idea of actually printing with the same color on the on the on the mm. same color fabric. I mm. love that idea. Mm. Mm. White on white, especially sheer. So if you're working with a filmy silk, and then you print over that in white ink, also is is yes. beautiful, particularly for the bridal market. Um, yes, can, can be really beautiful. But silver on oh, white, gold on white is also lovely. Wow. So do you do you still do printing for um, or do you still sell your 
fabrics no. or what do you do with your no so um i've had quite a long career with it in the 1990s i used to make uh, garments myself that i would sell at flea markets that were dyed and printed so i had flea market stands with a bunch of stuff in and then between 2002 and 2008 i made bespoke fabrics for the south african fashion industry um, oh, wow. and, and I made quite a lot of stuff for the SA Fashion Week events. Um, mm. And then in 2008, I shifted the business model and I started um, packaging kits that are sold to craft shops. And then, of course, I needed okay. to teach people how to use the kits. So I became yes. a traveling craft teacher and I traveled around the country teaching people how oh, to wow. dye their own fabric. And then between 2010 and 2013 i also published two books with meds press um, okay. and and now i've and, what, and, and that is on is that um on line of printing or is that or, or so the first books? the first book is contemporary dye craft and it's all about tie-dyeing garments mostly garments and silk okay. scarves and then my second book is 50 Silk Scarves. And that book was really an opportunity for me to, my, my books were always intended to be the perfect notes to give to students in my classes. I didn't want okay. to give out photocopied notes. I wanted to give them a book yeah. that they could oh, take yes. home and keep and read yes. and use. Um, and Vilsia makes, makes really, really beautiful, high quality books. So the second book was really to, to encapsulate all of my teachings. So it's split into three parts uh, and silk scarves are just the vehicle to hang the story on. So the first part okay. of is all about dyeing. Then there's yes. a third that is printing with found objects. So that was okay. something I taught quite a lot into the skills development space where we teach people to create patterns with random items that you find in your home. Yes. And then the third part was all about lino prints. Okay, so awesome. if you can get your hands on a copy of silk scarves, you'll, you'll find there is a, a very kind of mm. concise section on lino printing in there. Yes. But if you are looking Great. for the book, I recommend you buy it now because it's going out of print. She's not making any more of them. Okay. Now I'll definitely have a look and see. You are. And it is also available in Afrikaans as Say Serpa. So if you don't mind okay. reading an Afrikaans book, there is more of the Afrikaans stock than that. This Reich. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. So you've you've got me to yourself. Another thing. Yes. Do you still do you still teach? So I teach, or do you still I teach online. So okay. I have um, two different ways that I teach. Uh, the one way is simply an online course. So you can go to my online course, okay. pay for it through PayPal, and then consume the material in your own time at your own pace. I am absolutely available to answer questions for students who are doing the courses. And mm -hmm. um, the course material is a mixture of video, pictures, copy, uh, links that you can okay. go to. And then uh, my second method of teaching is for people who are looking for more of a subscription kind of an experience. So they pay a monthly fee and every month I teach okay. something. And that's oh, hosted yes. on Patreon. And you can start anywhere from $1 to as much as $99. And depending on the payment tier that you come in at, I will give you different mm. benefits. So on the lower tiers, you get uh, podcasts and tutorials. Then as you move up, you get oh, designs to download. As you move up, you get eBooks. As you move up to a higher oh, level, you wow. get access to the online courses. Mm. So um, it depends on how you prefer to learn. Some people want a monthly guided learning experience and some people prefer to just go in and cherry pick a course when they want it. it. So yes. I've set up both systems for people to... Oh, I'll definitely go and check it out, yes. Okay, that's awesome. When I post the video, yeah. I'll, I'll share the links so you can take it. That would be great. Okay. Thank and then you. and then it's quite exciting. I, I have been approached this week to make content for um, an app 
called Graphy, G-R-A-P-H-Y. And they okay. are looking for content creators to make. It's kind of a book style thing that comes up on your phone. Okay. And so gonna, it's, <laughs> that it's, sounds it's, interesting. Yeah, I haven't, done, I haven't done a course yet, but basically it's a, a new way of delivering an online course. We, we, so my online courses on Thinkific have got quite a lot of words and copy and that kind of thing. But Graphy is all about visual. So it's uh, rich in oh, video yes, yes. and pictures um, and, yes. and speaking, not reading. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be developing my first course for Graphy uh, in the next month, which is quite exciting. Um, and then, then my teaching will be on an app, which should be, could be cool should be quite oh, an adventure be, yeah. yes, yes. yeah so, <laughs> yeah I was, I was I know I was really surprised because uh, the lady contacted me and when her email came through I was like is this spam or is this for real so I made the appointment <laughs> yes. with her to find out and it turns out it's for real and I said to her like how the hell did you find me because she's in India yes and she said that she'd found me on Instagram oh, wow. Yeah, it's a small world now. <laughs> it's, it, it's amazing. It's amazing because yes. this stuff wasn't happening five years ago. So, yes, it's all very, the opportunities and yes. yes, yes, especially you know because you sit, you know, you know, you just you're not in a big city, you're in a small town, and you still have access to all of this. It's just it's amazing. Yeah, it is mind boggling. <laughs> After I spoke to her yesterday, I couldn't sleep last night. I was like, oh, I just want to start on the course. I, you know, but I had so much other yeah. stuff scheduled for today. Yes. So I have to wait for tomorrow. So, oh. <laughs> you have me to yourself, Jean. Uh, do you have any questions? I think you've answered a lot of questions, but it's great that I could actually speak to you because now if I have a question okay. in the future, it will be just so much easier for me to ask. Okay, okay, okay. What fabrics are you working on? At the moment, it's just calico that I dye myself in a color that I want, okay. and then I just print on that. Okay. So I haven't actually ventured. So I try to keep it natural. Okay. But, I, yeah. but I've seen that you use like um, any fabric really that looks interesting to print so, on. So I I've, learned. I learned when I was working for the fashion industry. I'd always say to the fashion designers, "Please give me hundred percent cotton." And then they'd give mm. me everything and say, don't you want to just try? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did a lot of just trying. And I learned that, number one, Aquatix, uh, the Aquatix brand that you buy from Chemisol is extremely robust. And okay. although they will only guarantee it on cotton because they have to cover their asses with both hands in terms of guarantee. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. The ink does take on most fabrics that are kind of porous. So as long as it's not yes. shiny, yes, the ink will take and last. But then I also, I always say start with your end use first. So mm. if, for example, you're printing a fabric that's going to go into an art quilt that will never be washed, does yes. it matter? Okay. Then I also say, sample everything you try. So it's uh, very, very yes. simple to just put a smudge of ink onto a tiny, tiny swatch and then put that in your washing machine. Mm. And wash it many times. Idea. Wash it. I would even do it with the cottons. Um, yes. Because it gives you an indication of how much the fabric's going to shrink how it's going to behave, what it's going to do, um, if the color is going to change, uh, all, all sorts okay. of questions and yeah. answers for That's you. a good idea. Yeah. Yes. So I, I say sample everything. And then what you tend to find is you get a spectrum of, of results from really good to really bad. And within that spectrum, again, you have options. So um, if, if it looks as though the ink's going to wash out a little, the, and yes. I would hand wash in lukewarm water, only do not rub. Okay. 
So at least that you know sense. then what to expect. Yes. And, and mm. you're in a great position. You're not making to sell on to other people. You're making it for yourself. So, so if you've got a fabric that you want to print that you think is very beautiful, but you're worried it's going to wash out, then you can, you can make the deal with yourself. Okay. Are you prepared to hand wash it or not? Exactly. And, and if you're prepared to hand wash it carefully and not rub it and that kind of thing, then your prints will also last longer. I have yes. to say that I've got a piece of polyester fabric, polyester gingham that I printed with Aquatex not so long ago. And I, was, I still thought to myself, oh my goodness, what am I doing? Because this is definitely going to wash out. And I've now washed it two or three times in the washing machine and it looks it's fine. fine. It's fine. I think that you also have that on Facebook, that piece, did you show it? Uh, somewhere, a picture. I might have. Because I'm sure I saw the gingham and I think there's no, just the gingham, yeah. Yes, I, I might have. It. So what happened yes. was I got a stash of fabrics from a deceased estate that were all itty bitty and really awful. Some of them were like, I was like, what am I ever going to do with this fabric? And then I was like, oh, I can print on it. I had time and ink. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and um, I've printed on a whole bunch of really strange things. And the results have been surprising. It was a, it was a great yes. opportunity. I like that idea. Yes, to experiment. So you must remember the supplier is, is going to give very specific guarantees because they don't want returns. Okay. But as long as we're playing and we're open to the play experience and we're open to learning, to then uh, experiment with little bits and sample everything. You know, if it's important that it's washed fast, then sample it and put it in the washing machine the way you plan to. And that will tell you yes. what you've got. Oh, well, that's a great idea. Okay. 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 Was that useful? Yes, because I've, I always thought that maybe it should only be cotton, you know, that I use. Yeah. But now I will definitely try other fabrics as well because I've okay. got a whole stash. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> okay. 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 The, the other to remember, thing to remember is not all inks are the same. Yes. So, um, like I say, the, the dollar, I've, I've had the experience, it's not as wash fast as the Aquatex. Um, I know a lot of people in the group are working with uh, Speedball and other brands that we don't have in South Africa. Mm. Um, so, so I really, the thing I cannot stress enough is, is stick to the instructions on the label of the product you've bought, not what you've read on the internet. Because you oh, okay. don't know what the person you don't know what the person on the internet was working with. You don't know yeah. if they heated it for long enough. You know, when somebody came to me in a class and said to me, they used an ink and it washed out, my first question to them was, Were you in a hurry when you were heat setting it? And very okay. often the That's answer good comes advice. Back, Yes. Very often the answer comes back, Yes, I was in a hurry. Then it's not your ink. <laughs> okay. Then yes. it's not your ink. It's you. You didn't iron it for long enough. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's boring. The Aquatex, you have to iron for six minutes. And a lot of people yes. go, oh, six minutes. I'll iron the T-shirt for six minutes and I'm done. No, every single it looks okay, <laughs> of the ink needs six minutes of heat. Yes. Not the whole garment. Every square inch of ink needs six minutes of continuous heat. Uh, mm. And and if it's a big piece, that can take you an hour or two. Yeah, are you right? Yeah. So <laughs> and and remember, the fabric can also be folded. So I fold the fabric and put it in a heat press. Then it goes quicker. If you've got one of those Elna presses. Yes, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. If you're planning on doing lots lots of of uh, printing, then an Elna press will be your lifesaver. Or a tumble dryer. Oh yeah, that's also a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm. Mm. Big pieces of the tumble dryer. And then yes. just a couple of tips about heat setting, um, particularly with the Aquatex that I know very well, is you know it's heat set when you run your fingers over the surface of the fabric and you can't feel the print anymore. It's become part of the cloth, so you get a smooth okay. feeling under your fingertips. Also, with Aquatex, the smell changes. So when you first start heat setting, there's quite an ammonia kind of smell that comes off the ink. After six minutes, that smell's gone. Yes. 
So if you've got a sensitive nose, you can use your nose. I'm not suggesting okay. that you inhale the fumes. <laughs> I'll see if it works for me. <laughs> yes, yes, but it, it can be an indicator because after many, many years of heat setting, I don't, I don't even um, time it anymore. My nose tells me when it's done. Okay, <laughs> I'm not there yet, but hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Oh, awesome. Okay, so no more questions. Do you have any more questions? I've I think no, I think that's about it. Okay. Are you are you printing on a padded surface? Yes, because I read up that you must put down a um like a um blankie or something and then put it on top of that. So yes, I'm doing that. Okay, because that's something that sometimes beginners have challenges. They say that the registration isn't happening nicely. And that's purely because there isn't enough padding. You can picture it if you've got two rigid surfaces and they don't totally meet, then they're never going to. But if you the one surface is soft, then it allows yes, for but that, exactly got some give. Um, is, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that's that I've got at least. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So, uh, are you enjoying the group? Yes, I am. I'm definitely getting ideas and. Um, Everything okay. looks so amazing. <laughs> okay. I'll get there one day. <laughs> I look forward to seeing your work on the group. <laughs> and and yeah. thank you for showing up today. I appreciate it very much. Yes, it was no, it was lovely talking to you. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, lovely. Thank you for showing really up. Really amazing. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> it's just Thanks. so nice to get a Cape Tonian. <laughs> yes. Yay. <laughs> Have a lovely day mm -hmm. and uh, I Thank hope you, you to chat with you again soon. Yes, definitely. Bye. Bye. Bye.